What are the biggest lies we've been told about cancer by doctors and the medical community at large? Most of the physicians that talk to people uh, tell them what they what they think they know. They don't realize that it's a metabolic disease. It's not a genetic disease. So, um, and I don't think they know that. Uh, they haven't been trained. The field, majority of people in the oncology field uh, are, are not aware of that. And it becomes clear uh, when they discuss this uh, with their cancer patients. So if a person doesn't really know something, that would be lack of knowledge, uh, not, not related to uh, actually lying like these politicians do. Okay, so we know that. Um, the, the great tragedy in my mind is the, um, the, the therapies that are offered to cancer patients are, ba are based on the conventional knowledge that cancer is a genetic disease. Um, mm -hmm. When you look at radiation and poisonous chemicals, uh, we all know, everyone, even the oncologists know that that's not good. And there, there by the grace of God, you might survive these very, very toxic treatments. Those toxic treatments were supposed to be have been eliminated with the promise of the genomic uh, investment in cancer. We've spent a um, hundred billion dollars on the Cancer Genome Project. The promise of the genome uh, investment has not been coming, and mm -hmm. it won't come because cancer is not a genetic disease. So um, so we, we, we have to continue to rely on very toxic treatments for cancer because the promise of the new precision medicines and personalized therapies have, have, not, have not been realized. We have almost 1,700 people a day dying from cancer in this country. Mm -hmm. That is about 70 people an hour. So in this discussion that we have, 70 people will be dead from cancer, okay? And that just came out. We have cancer statistics just came out the other day, 2024 cancer statistics. And what they said is we've uh, reduced cancer deaths by 30% since 1991. And that's because the anti-smoking campaign was started in 1991. So had we all continued wow. to smoke, uh, we would have 30% more cancer deaths than we have right now. So this doesn't this doesn't speak to new therapies for people that already have cancer. It's it's the prevention. So if you stop smoking, you'll prevent a lot of different kinds of cancers. And people look to that as if we're making major advances in managing cancer. And the fact is, we're not. It's an abysmal uh, uh, disaster. It's probably it's probably goes down as one of the greatest uh, tragedies in the history of medicine. And it's not, and nobody's lying to anybody. They just put all their eggs in a singular basket, and that basket has happens to have a huge hole in it. And 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 we're not we're not getting the benefits of all the billions of dollars that we have invested in this disorder. It's a, and that means so the theory under which the disease is viewed and managed is incorrect. It's a metabolic disorder, and once you realize that, we'll be able to drop the death rates by fifty percent in five years. But you have to uh, overturn a monstrously powerful system and paradigm. And that is not going to happen anytime soon. Does that mean it comes from uh, the parents? Is that no, how no, you develop no, no. cancer? You, ha you, have, you have two kinds. You have somatic mutations and you have germline mutations. So germline mutations are those that are passed down within families. And uh -huh. you hear about the BRCA1 and you hear leaf many and you hear a, a variety of other of these so-called. These are inherited risk factors. Um, they are secondary risk factors. The primary risk factor is damage to the ability of the cell to generate energy with, through oxygen. So when you see these mutations in families, like the BRCA1 that you hear an awful lot about because of Angelina Jolie and others mm -hmm. um, having breasts and ovaries and all this kind of stuff removed um, as, a, as a prophylactic because they carry the gene. But, but the issue is that only about 50% of the women that have that gene will actually go on to develop uh, some sort of a tumor, 50% mm -hmm. of them will not. Uh, and the answer is, we're not really clear about that, but we know that every one of the women that did develop a breast tumor or an ovarian tumor, whatever, that carried the gene, we always find that the cells are fermenting. They're using uh, energy without oxygen. So we know that's the common link for all these different cancers, uh, whether it occurs sporadically uh, or through the germline. So uh, when we hear about cancer as a genetic disease, 
uh, that that comes from the theory that that somatic mutations cause dysregulated cell growth. So you have to say to yourself, what is this? What is cancer? It's cell division out of control, dysregulated cell growth. What causes that? And the answer to the according to the National Cancer Institute and most it's it's uh, gene mutations in in a variety of different uh, uh, targeted genes. But that but we and others have shown that those mutations are not the cause, they're the effect of damaged uh, energy metabolism. So the mutations are effects, they're not the cause. So if you're constantly chasing effects, you're, you're never, the outcome is never going to be optimal. And when you have, oh, we're targeting this gene and that gene, all of those are downstream effects, they're not the cause. So this is why the field is locked into this uh, perpetual uh, uh, problem where you, you hear all this, but cancer is, 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 is out of control. Uh, when you have 70 people uh, an hour dying from a disease, this is an out of control situation. And it's not, and it's going to stay out of control as long as the field continues to real that uh, put uh, energy into all this, uh, these gene mutations. And, and then you have the immunotherapies, which you hear about Keytruda, Opdivo. That's all based on the somatic mutation theory of cancer. And if the theory underlying the disorder is incorrect, those drugs are never going to be optimal in managing and reducing the death rate. That's what I want to know. Can you reduce from, from 1,700 people a day to 800 people a day? That would be a huge advance. If you did that in five years, you know you're on the right track. So, uh, and, and uh, right now, the system, it does not acknowledge that. They, they have no clue, not all of them, of course, but most oncologists, when you tell them it's a metabolic disorder and you can manage it using diet lifestyle issues. They, they, they don't eat, they, they say there's no evidence to support that. And the evidence, they don't read the evidence. Well, it's one thing, uh, and that's a, it's another thing. If you don't read the, re, the research material and understand it, then you remain uh, uh, ignorant of the information. And there's no way, and you're not trained in medical school to know this. You're trained that cancer is a genetic disease. You go to the National Cancer Institute website, everything's cancer is a genetic disease. And you feel like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I've inherited these genes and it's out of my control. That's wrong. Everything is, you have a lot of control over this disorder. It's just that you've been made to, to give uh, uh, an opinion that's not supported by the, by the new science. Do you think money, industry, and economic markets influence the way we perceive cancer treatment and cancer as a whole? I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, we have a, uh, we all know about um, physical toxicity. The reason, the reason why people uh, fear cancer is because they don't want to have to lose their hair and vomit mm -hmm. and, and all these, we call those um, physical and mental toxicities. But we also have a new form of toxicity called financial toxicity. So um, you can't believe how many uh, folks in this country that aren't well off uh, are more or less living uh, paycheck to paycheck, and then they get hit with a cancer bill for $30,000. It, it, it causes uh, families to uh, disintegrate, people commit suicide. Um, it's a tragedy of monumental proportions. And mm -hmm. um, it's called financial toxicity, and it's just as deadly as some of the physical toxicities that we're associated with. So why should drugs that, that don't work for so many people, uh, you should charge people only after the treatment works. You should never pay up front for any of this stuff. Uh, if it works, then you should pay. You should have some sort of a payment system. The longer you stay alive, the more you pay. You mm -hmm. shouldn't pay $30,000, and then in a year, you're dead. This mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. So um, we need to change the way we, we view the treat. How successful are the treatments? You go to the physician. He charges you a, a, a surgical procedure. Okay, some of this is, is, is expected, but a lot to be charged for drugs that cause you to have your hair fall out, your, your gut destroyed, and all these other horrible things. Why are you paying all this money for something that's causing you harm? Um, uh, yes, and there's a huge industry associated uh, the cancer industry is known to be one of the wealthiest. I mean, they, they make mm -hmm. billions of dollars on these drugs. But if they, if you're, okay, I, I don't think people would mind it too much if the drugs actually worked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, 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 why we got, as I said, we've got, we got 70 people dying this hour that we're speaking. And many of them That's have right. taken some of these drugs. So, um, and they fail uh, one after another. And, and not only that, 
if you do happen to survive, and believe me, there are millions of cancer survivors who have survived the so-called standard of care, but a good number of those folks now suffer from digestive, hormonal, mental, all kinds of physical mm. uh, ailments that actually reduce their survival on the planet. Mm. Uh, and you die from other things. Oh, you you were cured of your cancer, but now you 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 die from heart disease, and you and you die from bo de bone density issues. You die you die from all these other things as a secondary effect of being treated with very very toxic uh, approaches. So, um, and that's what people don't want. They would like to be treated for for their disorder with something that's not going to be harmful that actually makes them uh, uh, their outcome better. And this is what we published this press pulse where we d gradually degrade the tumor slowly um, as we enhance the health and vitality of the body. We don't, there should be no hair loss. Anytime you see a, a cancer patient that's bald, why, why that person is bald? You're trying to kill the tumor cells, not the hair follicles. Right. I, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you get off target effects that you shouldn't have off target. We specifically kill tumor cells by taking away the only fuels that they use to survive, which is glucose and glutamine. And and the people get healthy as you're degrading the tumor. You're also getting rid of a lot of other uh, uh, collateral problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. A lot of these things go away along with the cancer. Um, the problem, the problem right now is what I've just shared uh, with you is not known or understood by the majority of healthcare providers in this country. That's the problem. There's a lack of information dissemination of what I said. The science is clear. The problem is the word is not out there and people then run off to the oncologists. And when you ask them about metabolic therapy, metabolic oncology, they don't never heard of it. So how are you, how, your very healthcare providers are almost clueless as to the biology of the disorder they're, they're treating. If they don't know that it's a metabolic disorder, that's a tragedy. And the consequences are, are 1,700 people a day dying from this disease.